everybody. Just wanted to uh, check in and give you all an update on how my interview went last week. And uh, so I had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. So I'm going to try to keep things vague, uh, but try to give you as many details as possible. So I'm not even going to mention the comp mention the company. I will say it was in Pittsburgh. And the interview ended up being three hours, which was way longer than I expected. Um, but uh, I just want to give you a little walkthrough of how it went, and then maybe uh, it'll help you all, you know, to kind of know what to expect on an interview. So I went in, and um, I ended up having an interview with three people. So the first person was in human resources. And she just asked me some general questions, like non-tech related questions about um, like my education and uh, just, you know, kind of things I was interested in, you know, why did I want to work there? And so that was pretty easy. <laughs> and then the next stage was to actually meet with another uh, developer, another engineer. Uh, the job was... Uh, Full stack engineer. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was the title. So I met with another engineer, and that's when I started getting a lot more technical questions. So those were, for the most part, I, I found them to be pretty reasonable questions, uh, pretty easy. Uh, then we had the whiteboard test. So this uh, engineer. Um, gave me a, a problem to solve and I had to write out my solution on the whiteboard. So in that situation, syntax doesn't really matter as much. Uh, you can kind of pseudocode things. So I kind of started out by writing things in normal JavaScript and by the end of it, I was just, <laughs> just kind of um, literally just using words to write out like, this, this is a loop <laughs> and um, you know when this happens then this will happen and uh, I just kind of didn't even bother with the syntax anymore and uh, my, my curly brackets look terrible on a whiteboard um, but anyway I ended up getting it right and I'd never done a whiteboard question before and it ended up being really fun so I had always kind of been nervous about it, and I've heard stories about how difficult they are. Uh, but this one was, it, it took a while. Uh, it, it, it took a while. I kept asking, like, is it normal for me to take this long? And the, uh, the other engineer said, yeah, you know, it's, nobody's ever done it in, you know, a really short amount of time. So, uh, so they were cool about it. And while I was doing that, a third interviewer came in, and this was the person who... Um, potentially could end up being my boss and it was another engineer and they came in and stuck around to the end of, of my whiteboard uh, question and then one engineer left so that second interviewer left and the third one stayed asked me more questions these ones were were actually a little bit more difficult and probably one of the only questions I really wasn't sure about was in, in that third interview. And uh, eventually, I just wasn't, I didn't know a lot about the terminology being used, so once the interviewer explained it, I, I understood the question, but it probably didn't look good that I didn't know that, that particular terminology. Looking back on it now, I pr if I would have just guessed what I thought it was, it would have been right, but I'd, I'd rather not guess and and look foolish like I was was just trying to fake it, you know? Uh, I'd rather just be sure. And um, then I get a chance to ask some questions. And so I, I asked some questions about, you know, what's it like working there, about the culture. And uh, so that was it. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward interview. Now, I'd like to tell you a few of the things that, that happened and that I did that may be helpful to you. So... Uh, the first thing I did when I got there, I was a half an hour early. So I, I talked in the, in the lobby of the building. Uh, I talked to the security guard for about 15 minutes and got a lot of good information from her. And it helped to kind of calm me down from like I wasn't just waiting by myself. I was you know, talking to another person and it, 
it did, it really helped. But I got some great information and found out that the security guard liked the people and and that company better than anybody else in the building because they were always so nice and polite and it seemed like they were always having a lot of fun. So that was good information that, I mean, you, you can't really get that information anywhere. Sure, you could ask people that work there, um, but getting it from an outside source, I, I think is a, a lot more valuable and, and reliable. Uh, so that was really cool. You may not always be able to do that, but if there's somebody that you could talk to that may give you a little bit of insight, like an outsider's perspective, from interacting with people, uh, I think that could be helpful. And that's not something I planned on doing. It just happened. But after thinking about it, I, that's probably one of the most important things that, that happened in this interview. And then when it came to the actual questions, I found myself answering in a way that I didn't expect to, but it might be helpful. So, so some questions, the the question would be something like, you know, if you had this situation, what would you do? And instead of providing like a sh just a straightforward coding answer, my answer would be more like, if, you know, I heard about this one thing and I think it solves that problem. So I would look up more about that and I think I would go that direction. So, and I think that's an acceptable answer because that's an honest answer. That's what I really would do if I was faced with a problem like that. I wouldn't just try to s spend all my time coming up with my own solution. I would obviously try to find something out there that's already solving the problem and most likely better than what I could come up with. Um, and I, I even at one point said, you know, there's this paid service and that's what they do. So. You know, the current way, as described in this situation, is not going to work. That's that's not at all how you should do it. But instead of me saying I, w I would code this, I said, you know what, there's this other service. That's exactly what they do. I would reformat the data this way, and I'd send it to that service, assuming that we had the money to do that. And, you know, the the interviewers didn't say, you know, hey, wrong answer. You know, they were okay with that. And uh, I did that, you know, several times. So that wasn't always my fallback answer. But sometimes, you know, that is honestly the best answer. Uh, so I haven't heard back. I'm supposed to hear back sometime this week. So maybe I should wait to give recommendations until I hear back about, you know, how my performance was. But it, it seemed to me like they were satisfied, at least with those answers. And... So I, I kind of would recommend, you know, it, to think about those answers, you know, kind of think outside, like the straightforward, like, okay, how would I code this and think more like if, if I was really doing this project uh, and I had the resources of the company that I'm, I'm applying for, what would realistically be the best use of my time and the, my team's time? Uh, so... Anyway, that, w that was my experience. Uh, I'm interested to know if, uh, if any of you all have any more questions. I'd, I'll do my best to answer them. Like I said, I, I don't want to be too specific uh, in giving details about the company, but in terms of just details about how I approach things and my answers, I can definitely uh, give more of, of those. So I'd love to hear what you think about it. Uh, if you... Um, if you've had similar experiences in interviews or if you have a lot more experience than me, I'd love to hear what kind of uh, advice you have and I'll be happy to answer any questions. So um, I hope this was helpful and uh, I'll see y'all next time.